Going back on the record, the time on the video screen is 11.43 and 32 seconds. Please continue. Okay. Uh, Simmons, did, have you ever reviewed your, your Wikipedia entry? Uh, once in a while I do. I don't know when was the last time, but maybe a year ago. Okay. And do you know, I mean, have you ever contributed to it, or do you know people who do contribute to it? No, I know many people, they... Um, take any mainstream media articles or any reports, they put it in there, but no, okay. I haven't contributed. Have you, uh, when you've looked at it, have you thought that it's generally accurate about the statements that it makes? Yes, generally yes. Um, one of the things that um, uh, it indicates in your biographical information is that uh, you, you've made certain allegations some of them, that, some of them, we've talked about a little bit, and I wanted to ask you about some of the others. Uh, one of the entries indicates nuclear secrets black market. It says Edmonds alleges that in the course of her work for the government, she found evidence that the FBI, State Department, and Pentagon had been infiltrated by a Turkish and Israeli-run intelligence network that paid high-ranking officials to steal nuclear weapon secrets, um, and they have some footnotes for that and some sites. Um, is, is that correct that you've made those allegations? Uh, that information is correct. And uh, if I were be making it, I would say those or um, government organizations and others, uh, there will, there's another place missing there. They list the uh, State Department, et cetera, but there's one other place that's missing. And, and what is that place? Uh, that would be Rand Corporation. Um, and can, can you tell me about the uh, so give me some more information about the Turkish and Israeli-run intelligence network that is referred to there. Um, again, this information has been public the, uh, without getting into any methods of intelligence gathering. Yes, uh, uh, through certain U.S. Uh, officials, executively appointed officials, uh, uh, foreign entities, um, not necessarily or not only government related, so if you say Israel and Turkey, not only government related, but other entities because it has multi layers, right. they're their op operations, and some of these uh, layers sometimes they conduct their uh, operations uh, independently and uh, with the sole purpose of obtaining a profit and therefore uh, the information they obtain, let's say the nuclear or weapon technology, weapons technology related information doesn't necessarily only go to, to Turkey or Israel, but they sell it to the highest bidder. That's how they operate. Uh, they uh, contact their people, whether it is in ISI, in Washington DC, part of the military attache for Pakistani intelligence, uh, or the um, certain Saudi business people in Detroit may be contacted. And they say, okay, and talk about these Turkish entities. This is, we have obtained this particular DVD containing this, and and this person is willing to pay five hundred thousand. Will you offer more? Because if you don't, we will give it to this person. So what I'm trying to say is, they do it both for governments, uh, foreign governments, but some of those operatives, they also they offer it in open market, uh, and they have. Uh, they have individuals on their payroll on almost every major nuclear facility in the United States, RAM Corporation, and uh, various, uh, in Midwest, various um, Air Force labs uh, that develop certain uh, weapons technology, which I'm not very familiar with the technology itself. Okay. Uh, when, you, when you refer to the and when the article refers to the paid, high-ranking American officials, can you identify who they are? That person has been identified by others. Okay. And he has been identified as, the, uh, as Mr. Mark Grossman, okay. uh, who used to work for the State Department. Right. And Mr. Grossman, I think, is also in your gallery, correct? Yes. Um, and I, I read somewhere that Mr. Grossman had some uh, relationships with a Turkish organization, Turkish diplomats here in the United States. Uh, yes, uh, he had 
very, very close relationship with not only Turkish diplomatic communities and entities, but business, and also some of these uh, criminal layer operatives that I told you about, and currently that he's not working, he actually is working for a Turkish company called Ihlas Holding. Okay. Now, was Mr. Grossman the uh, ambassador to Turkey at some point? Yes. Okay. And, uh, and then, um, what was his position at the State Department, if you recall? Uh, he had several different positions. Um, I believe in 1999 or uh, 2000 was European Affairs that dealt a lot with NATO. And afterwards, during uh, an early Bush administration's uh, stage, he was the second or the third highest person in the State Department. I'm not sure about the title. Okay. The and, and during that time, I'm sorry, during that time um, when he was the second or third highest ranking person of state. Um, I, I've read somewhere that you, you've alleged that he actually warned the Turkish embassy about a CIA front company that had been set up to stop proliferation of nuclear weapons. That will be summer 2001, whatever title he held at that point. Yes. Um, he, um, Mr. Grossman, uh, informed a certain uh, Turkish diplomatic entity who was also an independent operative of, uh, of, uh, of a company called Brewster Jennings because Brewster Jennings was frequenting the American Turkish Council as a consulting or analyst firm and there were certain um, nuclear related operatives who wanted to hire Brewster Jennings uh, and have it posed as a front company so they were there were talks between the, those Turkish operatives and Brewster Jennings, and uh, Mr. Grossman wanted those people to be warned that Brewster Jennings was a government front, a uh, front for government, and, and, and it was a front, it was not a company, it was a front for government, U.S. government, and to, for those Turkish individuals to be told to stay away from Brewster Jennings, but the person who received that information, the Turkish diplomatic but also operative, actually contacted the uh, Pakistani military attache and discussed with the person who was there uh, about this fact and also told them, warned them, to stay away from Brewster Jennings. Okay. Um, and now, was, was this one of the allegations or one of the concerns that you brought to the attention of anybody at any point? Uh, you mean when I was working for the FBI, yes. when I blew the whistle inside the FBI? Right. No, I didn't do it inside the FBI because yeah. at that point I didn't know they were covering up this information only after I was fired mm -hmm. and the state secrets privilege was invoked. Mm -hmm. And knowing what I knew, I went to Congress and discussed it with certain people in Congress. I brought it up with the Inspector General's office inside uh, during a meeting. and. At that point, I will provide them with details in terms of dates and who were those targets, which I can't the direct targets of them. And when you say the Inspector General's office, do you mean the DOJ Inspector General? Correct. I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. Glenn Fines, under Glenn Fines' office. Um, and why would Mr. Grossman, if you know, uh, warn the Turkish government, other people, uh, not to deal with the CIA front company? Uh, there were various relationships and various activities Mr. Grossman was engaged with these individuals and I don't know which reasons was the top reason for him to do it. Mm -hmm. Some of them were the monetary uh, relationship but others dated back to operations that he was leading while he was an ambassador, in uh, U.S. ambassador in Ankara, in Turkey up until 1997 and some of these operatives dealt with him and they were doing certain operations in Central Asia for him. I don't know who he was working for, Mr. Grossman at the time for these operations. Uh, it's hard for me to tell. He was involved in so many different things and I don't know which one constitutes the biggest reason he was providing this. Um. Just going back to the Israeli, uh, we've talked mostly about the Turkish organizations, yes. Turkish government. Uh, are you aware of uh, 
the uh, either Israeli government or Israeli organizations uh, influencing members of Congress as well? Uh, not directly. Okay. Uh, not directly. Indirectly? Uh, indirectly, based on how they work, some of the largest uh, Israeli uh, lobby groups with the entities such as AT and also the Turkish uh, diplomatic community and how how they actually train and, and, and make it possible for the Turkish uh, lobby and these entities to do it. Uh, they had training period in between 96 and 98 from individuals that were sent to them from both APAC and JINSA, mm -hmm. both on the lobbying but also on uh, covering the money track, covering up the money track. Um, one of the other entries on your Wikipedia uh, entry indicates that uh, you'd accuse uh, Mr. Hastert and members of the U.S. government of, let me make sure I'm reading this correctly. The, the entry says Edmonds also accuses Dennis Hastert of taking bribes. I think we've talked about that a little bit, correct? Yes. And then it says, and high-ranking members of the U.S. government of nuclear secrets to Turkey and Pakistan. Uh, did, did you allege that high-ranking members of the U.S. government had sold nuclear secrets to Turkey and Pakistan? So they were involved in operations that were obtaining illegally U.S. weapons and nuclear-related technology mm -hmm. and sell it to foreign governments and also foreign independent oper operatives. Now, um, one of the other entries indicates it says 9114 knowledge, uh, and I'll just read it. It says she claims that the FBI received information in April 2001 from a reliable Iranian intelligence asset that Osama bin Laden was planning attacks on four to five cities with planes. Some of the people were already in the country, and the attacks would happen in a few months. Uh, did you uh, did you make that claim? Uh, I uh, took the language specialist, Farsi-speaking language specialist, the senior language specialist from the Iranian division, mm -hmm. Farsi division in FBI Washington field office who worked right next to me, to the 9-11 Commission and Inspector General's office and he testified on this. He informed me and he showed me this translator, Behru Sashar, and there are documents out there that he went to Inspector General's office. He gave them the documents, the translated documents on these Iranians. I was not part of that translation. I was not involved. Um, after I left the FBI, because I was witness to that department's what they had obtained, I just facilitated Mr. Sarshar's meeting with 9-11 Commission and also with the uh, uh, Glenn Fine, Department of Justice Inspector General's office, and I put him in touch with the members of media, but that's my only involvement with that uh, Iranian case. Um, and do you believe that that's why uh, the 9-11, uh, the families of the 9-11 victims wanted to get your testimony in connection with their case? I am not sure because as far as I knew, it had to do with the government of Saudi Arabia and the Saudi Arabian financial institutions. I was not told anything about the Iranian case. Um, uh, we've talked about some members of Congress um, uh, having connections with uh, the Turkish government or Turkish uh, organizations. Um, are, are there others that you're aware of, uh, other than the ones we've discussed? Already? Congressional members? Congressional members? Yes. Can you, t can you identify some of them? Their pictures are um, on the, the, I have pictures included on my website, okay. and they can be identified. Um, there are several there, uh, outside the ones you named. All right. I, I just, uh, I looked at the website but didn't recognize okay. <laughs> some of them. So I, it, it, would you be able to tell me who the other pictures are? Others have been identified. They're all identified as public information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Lantis uh, is one of them. Huh? I believe he passed away. Um, and uh, Tom Lantis' office uh, would be not only with the bribe but also in disclosing highest level 
protected U.S. intelligence and weapons technology information, uh, both to Israel and to Turkey. His office was also involved with that. It was not only bribery, but it was other very serious criminal conduct. Um, I think Roy Blunt is uh, there. Um, there is an individual with a question mark there. Uh, so, um, the reason is a question mark is I left, I was terminated by April 2002, but this particular congresswoman, uh, the, the, the Turkish, these Turkish organizations and operatives, if they can't do it via money, they, they do via blackmail. So they collect information on sexual lives and other uh, information like that. Mm -hmm. And with this particular congresswoman, um, between 2000 and until I left, they, and this individual, this congresswoman is married with children, grown children, but she is bisexual. So they had sent Turkish uh, female agents, and that Turkish female agent worked for Turkish government, and uh, had sexual relationship with this congresswoman in her townhouse, in, uh, actually in this area. And, uh, and the entire episodes of their sexual conduct was being filmed uh, because the entire house, this congressional woman's house, is bugged, was bugged. And uh, so they had all that documented to be used for certain um, things that they wanted to request, but I left, so I don't know whether she, um, that congress, congresswoman complied and gave, that's why I couldn't use her name because I don't, I meant her face because I don't know if she did anything illegal afterwards, but she was, their things, information was being collected for blackmail purposes and her lesbian relationship. And they, the, the Turkish entities wanted both congressional related favoritism from her, but also her husband was in a high position in the area in the state she was uh, elected from. And the, the Turkish entities ran certain illegal operations and they wanted her husband's help. But I don't know if she provided them with, with those. I left, I was terminated. Can, and can you tell me how you know all that? Everything you just told me? Um, I can't discuss the intelligence gathering method by the FBI, um, but um, in general terms, when um, foreign targets uh, among themselves discuss um, how they were going to achieve certain goals, objectives, uh, and if th those communications are uh, collected and recorded, not only that you have communication, but uh, you, in some cases, uh, the involved field office can send surveillance team to see that actually they implemented, for example, if they say that somebody says at five o'clock they're gonna bug this house, the surve surveillance team would go and see that, yeah, in fact, these people broke it. And so there were various uh, ways and things were collected. Right. So, the, the, just to make sure I understand this, the Turkish entities were at least preparing to blackmail this congresswoman. Correct. Um, and is this congresswoman still a sitting member of Congress? Yes. And why, if you know, they want to blackmail this congresswoman? Um, I don't know what reasons they had. Uh, why they just didn't do money. Uh, they needed, uh, I was trained as a language specialist by my agent uh, for, to find pertinent information. And one of the things that we were thought in the FBI, everyone was thought in the counterintelligence, um, that the target US persons, whether they are in Congress or executive branch or wherever, uh, first go by foreign entities through what they refer to as hooking period. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was very common, it's a very common way of trying to find vulnerabilities and that is sexual, financial, um, any other kinds of breeds and it was, it was done a lot, it was being done a lot. And in some cases, uh, certain people from Pentagon would send a list of um, individuals with access to sensitive data, whether weapons technology or nuclear technology, and this information would include all their sexual preference, how much uh, they owed on their homes, if they have gambling issues, and the State 
uh, department, high-level State Department person would provide it to these uh, foreign operatives. And those foreign operatives then would go and hit, hook those Pentagon people, whether they were at RAND or some other Air Force base. And then the hooking period would take sometimes six months, sometimes one year. They would ask for a small favor. But eventually, after they would do the, the targets, the, the US person, some small favors, then they would go blackmail. And then that person would give them everything nuclear-related information, weapons-related information, it always worked for them. So it was not always money. If, if you know, I mean, what was it that the, these Turkish entities wanted from this congresswoman? Um, I know for sure that um, Armenian genocide was one, um, but also where she came from, that city, where she, the district where she came from is where a certain Turkish um, operatives, lobby groups run illegal businesses for uh, fundraising for themselves to, to, to generate money. And for laundering that money, they needed her influence in that city she is from, and also her husband, because her husband was also involved, had some high level position, not an elected person, with where she came from. And uh, they had another uh, representative who was making it possible, but supposedly she, at that point, was kind of was an obstacle. That's all I know. Um, in, in, in your experience, I mean, was this hooking uh, technique used with other members of Congress by Turkish entities? Um, well, when I work for the FBI, um, I, I work on um, uh, operations that were not only current, but a specific period of 1996 till 2000, 2001 December, 2002 January. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of things that a certain field office had provided me to go over, and some of that I didn't complete. But one example would be um, uh, uh, with regard to uh, Mr. Hastert, um, for example, he used a townhouse that was not his residence and for certain not very uh, morally accepted activities. Now, whether that was being used as blackmail, I don't know. But the fact that foreign entities knew about this, in fact, they sometimes participated in some of those not maybe morally well, activities in that particular townhouse that was supposed to be an office, not a house, residence, at certain hours, certain days, evenings of the week. So I can't say if that was used as blackmail or not, but certain activities, they were, they were shared, they were known. The, um, when, when, with respect to the congresswoman who they were, you don't, know, you don't know what happened ultimately because you left, right? Or you Correct. were terminating. Correct. But with respect to that congresswoman, you said one of the things that they wanted was, you said, Armenian genocide. I assume you were referring to the fact they wanted her support to yes. oppose the Armenian genocide resolution. Yes. And she was um, not leaning that way during that stage until this hooking started. That's and, and does it surprise you that they would go to those lengths uh, to, to gain her opposition to such a resolution? No, not at all. Well, why not? I don't know what their reason is that they are going to this extent. I mean, they may have, I mean, I can only guess what their reasons are, but they, they, they would do anything. They, it's, it's a very important issue, and, and uh, whether it's money, whether it's sexual blackmail, anything they would do to uh, not let this happen or get the support so it wouldn't happen. Um. Are you, are you aware of, other than the people that we've talked about, and I, and I want to come back to Roy Blunt uh, in a minute, but aside from the people we've talked about, are you aware of other current sitting members of Congress uh, who you believe have been given money by the Turkish uh, lobby, and Turkish government, um, to oppose the Armenian Genocide Resolution? Objection, um, speculation. You can answer. The pictures are there, and I just talked about that. A congressional uh, woman uh, with a question mark because I don't know whether she complied with their, but that's, those are it. Everything that 
those people are all there at that website, the pictures. What, why is, um, just uh, before I leave this subject, and, and you are, when we talk about the Armenian genocide, can you just describe what your understanding of that is? Uh, it, in terms of historically? Historically what it is. It's, it's the genocide that, uh, the, that was committed in Turkey against Armenians and, and uh, there are, I have read certain documents, historical documents in the past because this, this issue I have been aware of for a long time. Everybody in Turkey, they kind of know, but they can't admit they know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically what was available in Turkey was very limited. So my knowledge would be this very, very limited knowledge of uh, uh, what occurred. Right. So based upon you know, your background, your experience, um, in, in, in your opinion, is the Armenian genocide something that's generally accepted as a historical fact? In Turkey? Yeah. In Turkey, no. I mean, in Turkey, nobody can even say they think about it. What about elsewhere? In, uh, in other outside countries like Turkey. outside Turkey? Yeah. Yes. Um, at least in the circles that I've been, it is seen as something that is that is accepted and that is known as a, as one of those historical historical events that have taken place. Like, like the Holocaust in, in World War II, uh, something that people generally regard as correct. Something that happened. Are you are you aware of anyone any serious uh, scholars uh, and serious people who dispute you know, that is, those genocides took place? Um. Throughout the years, because I used to be on the email list of certain uh, student association that had international students, so I would get from the Turkish parts of those communi communities emails from this professor or that professor from Turkey visiting to give that lex lecture, but I don't even remember their names of those people. Mm -hmm. Is that a question? Did that answer quite your question? Well, another, I, I gather from what you're saying that you would get emails possibly from Turkish organizations, Turkish I did. people, where they would dispute that the Armenian genocide took place. Absolutely. Okay. Outside of you know, that, that group, that cultural group, if you will, are you aware of other objective scholars who dispute that the genocide took place? No, I'm not. Um, why is Roy Blunt on your, in your gallery? Uh, be one of the individuals who was the uh, recipients of both legally and illegally raised um, donations, campaign donations from foreign entities. And w what foreign entities? Uh, the ones that I'm aware of, Turkish entities. Yeah. It's, an, it's just like a network because yeah. those people, they work together yeah. and and I don't have expertise in PAC, but I, a lot of, there are so many ways that these PAC things can be not very legally distributed from one person's, uh, let's say, Mr. Hester's campaign mm -hmm. to that individual, or let's say if it's a foreign registered lobbyist, like Livingston can get foreign money, but then clean it and then give it through him. It's just so many ways. It's, it's a very complicated uh, maze-like network and how they get these this money cleared and into people, yeah. in, into people's pocket and also their campaign. And are you familiar with some of those PACs? No, not not okay. really. Have you ever heard of the Turkish Coalition USA PAC? No. Um, so, I mean, you're aware that the PACs exist, but you wouldn't be able to identify any of them. Correct, not by names. Okay. Correct. Um, Uh, are you, is it, is it come to your attention that some members of Congress, uh, once they've left Congress, like Dennis Hastert, engage in lobbying for the Turkish government? Well, Dennis Hastert is known publicly. Stephen Solars is known publicly. He used to be a congressman, and then he became lobbyist as soon as he left, both for Israel and Turkey. Uh, Bob Livingston, uh, he Within a year after he left Congress, he became the paid lobbyist for the government of Turkey, and he's registered under FARA, Foreign Agents Registration Act. Uh, but then there are uh, people who work for these lobbying firms who are not the top, but they have uh, received their share while they were working, whether they are in Pentagon. Uh, one person was Defense Intelligence Agency person, uh, Dana Bauer, and now she works for Bob Livingston. 
but this individual, Ms. Bauer, did a lot of favors and illegal favors to for government of Turkey and others, and then was hired by Livingston and put on a big salary to represent Turkish government. So it's it's uh, not only top tier, the lobbying firm, but even the people who work for them later and the various layers of, of those people. Okay. Um, what about uh, Richard Gephardt? Um, you know who he is, right? Yes, I do. Uh, and do you have any information about whether or not he took money from Turkish organizations? No, I just have current information based on what I read that he joined a lobby firm for that represents Turkey, with the same lobby that Mr. Hastur got hired, but I don't have any information. Okay. You heard of a firm called DLA Piper? Yes. Law firm. Are you aware of them lobbying for uh, the uh, uh, Turkish government? Yes. Okay. Um, get your understanding of what might be going on because it's particularly relevant to our case. If you have, you have a hypothetical congresswoman right, uh, from State X, right? she, her district has no t Turkish population to speak of or Arme Armenian population to speak of. Um, she's the largest recipient uh, of uh, Turkish PAC money uh, mm -hmm. in the 2008 election cycle. Right? Um, she uh, uh, Livingston and Rogers of the Livingston Group uh, when they're escorting uh, members of the Turkish Parliament to a reception. Uh, she uh, uh, receives fact sheets from the Livingston Group talking about Turkish relations. Uh, goes to luncheons in honor of uh, the Turkish Foreign Minister. Um, uh, and she opposes uh, uh, Romanian genocide resolution, uh, and in fact refuses to even recognize uh, genocide as a historical fact. What's your 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 sense? What does it uh, tell you what's going on there? I object. There's no no showing at all that she's got any expertise. It's speculation here. She's asking purely for an opinion. It's totally irrelevant and objectionable. Uh, based on several that I, I personally know about in terms of how they conduct and how they behave, those elected officials uh, who are uh, serving the foreign government's interests, I would say that modus operandi that you described is a classic fit of how uh, individuals who happen to owe their uh, and favors to a foreign government, in this particular case, Turkey, behave, act, and the kinds of people they associate with, that modus operandi classically matches uh, the individuals I know who were serving uh, Turkish governments and Turkish other Turkish entities' uh, interests. Right. In, in, in your view, based on what you know, would it be a reasonable statement to say that that congresswoman is taking money from Turkish interests in part for denying the existence of the Armenian Genocide? Objection, pure speculation. Say, so based on my knowledge, my experience, and what I know, that money, they, the, 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 those Turkish entities lobby organization will not give a penny to anyone unless they have a prior pact with that person of this is what you're going to do for us. And, and that, that has been the case at least until 2002. Um, in your blog, um, one of the things that you say, you're referring to your, your lawsuit, I think, but you say, my case also involves espionage activities uh, by several high-level U.S. officials, both elected and appointed. Um, have we already talked about, for the most part, what you were referring to there? Some of it. What, what have we not talked about that you're referring to in that portion of your blog? You want to discuss it off the record? Sure. Okay. Want to take a break off the record? 
Going off the record, the time on the video screen is 12.18 and 22 seconds.